Hello, this is Mark from Hawkridge Systems, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can leverage your advanced CAM technology in your lathe programming. Now, one of the things that you can do inside of CAMWorks is a machine simulation. What the machine simulation lets you do is check for collisions with your part, with your machine. You can check to see if your tool setup is going to cause any collisions, if your tool setup has enough reach to achieve the toolpaths that you've programmed, and if there is any need for edits, you can do edits on the fly looking at your machine simulation, and you can go back and test those edits to see if that corrects the issue. So let's take a look at a sample part to see how all that is done. Now I've got this simple part on screen. I've got a lot of operations already programmed in here, and I'd like to see what that does when it's on the machine. I'd like to represent the G code on the machine. And one way to do that is if we right click on our NC manager, go to machine simulation, and click on G code. And what that'll do is it'll bring up our machine simulation here. So this is a virtual representation of the CNC machine with full capability of the machine. If I just kind of click over here, I can rotate it around. We can see the sub spindle. We can also see my tool setup. So I can check to see if those tools have enough reach, if the tools will interfere with the part while some of the operations are being worked on. Lots of representation here to check for those collisions. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make sure that I have my collision detection turned on, and then I'm going to press play to watch the, the, uh, the replay of the operation. Okay, so we're doing, going through my operations. No problems so far until we see it gets into one of my turning operations, and it looks like some of my retraction here is probably colliding with the part. You can see there's a color coding on that edge there indicating that there's an issue. So I probably have to go back to that operation and correct it. For now, I just want to see if everything to do with the rest of the program is going to operate the way I like. So I'm just going to turn off that collision detection by unclicking that button there. I'm also going to go to my settings and I'm just going to turn off my collision. In this case, I'm actually still checking for collisions. I'm going to still get those warning messages, but I'm going to just continue through it. I'm not going to pause the, the playback. And in terms of over travel, maybe I'll just turn that off as well. I'm really just waiting to see, my original intention was to see if the subspindle transfer is going to work for me. So I'm just going to press play on that. Let's take a look as this thing goes along. So what you're actually seeing is a almost real-time removal of the material. So that operation is engaging with the, the 3D model of my part. We can see that layer upon layer is being removed as it machines uh, the part. And it's going to represent all my operations. And one thing you can do to keep track of what's going on is on the left side, you can see that it actually lists the G code as well. So that little highlighted line, that is the line of code being represented at that time. There's a lot of playback op options in here as well. I can slow down the playback. I can do line by line. I can actually do almost like just the drip feed with, with some of the hot keys on my keyboard. But all I'm really looking for is to make sure that if the machine kinematics are correct, if everything's moving as I intended, and like I said, I want to see that, that part transfer from the main to the sub. So when we get to that, we'll actually see the machine actuate. So the subspindle will come over, it'll grab the part, transfer over, and then we can see how the subspindle operations are going to operate as well. What you're seeing on screen right now is the fact that this is a mill turn machine. So we're actually representing that mill turn operation. If I can kind of zoom in on here, we're seeing the movement of the machine during the milling operation. So now it's holding that spindle steady where the live tool is engaging the part. That's also a way for you to check for things like your Cartesian versus polar coordinates. If you wanted to see if that's working for the machine, if your machine has certain limitations where you have to use that sort of coordinate system, you can see here that we're actually actuating along the C-axis as well. And eventually we're going to get to uh, some operations that even if you weren't using machine sim, you could really represent. But here you're getting the full view of the machine where while you're doing one operation, you can see where the tool is engaging. Now, in this case, you can see that that tool should be colliding with the chuck. If I had my collision detection turned on, it actually would warn me about that. And that would give me an idea that I have to go back and change my tooling setup. I could probably still use that tool. I could probably have everything still on the turret. I might just need to change the stations that they're on. And one of the things that's really useful about the machine sim is you can see that the turret moving back and forth, we can actually make sure that that has enough room to work. Now, in this case, we're doing a part transfer. I'm doing this grooving operation while holding the part between centers. And that gives me also a, ni a nice way to represent the tool, the machine. I can check for collisions between the main and the sub at this time. Whereas if I weren't using machine sim, I would not be able to see that. All I would be seeing is the part and whatever setup I defined inside my, my regular simulation. But here I can see the part off, I can see the transfer, and now we're gonna see that now I can work on the subspindle. 
making sure that I have enough clearance for the rest of the tools on the turret. I'm actually completing my part as per my my uh, my programming, and I'm holding the part with enough uh, enough relief that I can actually get those operations in there. So there's a real benefit to the machine simulation even outside of Milturn. This can be helpful for all kinds of, of uh, operations, all kinds of machines. But in this video, I wanted to show you the Milturn aspect because this is the most powerful use of the machine sim, showing the kinematics of the machine at the same time as you're looking at these operations. If you'd like to see more about machine sim and other ways to leverage your, uh, your advanced CAM technology in lathe programming, click on the link in the description below for the full webinar where we talk about this and other applications inside of Milturn programming. Thanks for watching.